Welcome along to my review of Norwegian Jewel. Let's do this. Hey, hey guys, so let's jump right on in and see what Norwegian Jewel had to offer. Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start and the embarkation process. This was absolutely painless. One of the very best, if not the best embarkation processes I've ever had. I went on Norwegian Breakaway before and boarding time started at 12 and I picked an 11 to 11.30 arrival time and we were held in a holding area until 12 and started to board. Now with Jewel I had exactly the same embarkation time, 11 to 11.30, but unlike Breakaway they didn't hold us back. We went straight into the terminal and then straight onto the ship. I timed it and from arrival at the terminal until stepping on the ship and completing muster was 12 minutes. You really cannot get much better than that. Fantastic from Norwegian, thumbs up, kudos, huge well done. If you're going on Jewel then I hope yours is as painless as mine was. The deparkation took a little bit longer than I would have liked, about an hour to get off the ship, but I don't really see how Norwegian could have really improved this process. I chose to walk off with my own luggage, baggage, suitcase, whatever you want to call it, but it seems that half of the ship also chose that option, so there was quite the lengthy queue to get off the ship. So the hour delay wasn't really any fault of Norwegian, it's just one of those things. In hindsight, I maybe should have waited back half an hour to let the queue die down a little bit, but I had things to do and Tokyo to explore. On to the food then. Now, I found this a little bit inconsistent. There was some absolutely fantastic food and there was some that was certainly subpar. I would highlight the main restaurant being very good about 90% of the time. Le Bistro and Cagney's were both absolute standout, could not fault the food in either of these. These specialty restaurants were top notch. Very attentive and informative staff, especially with attention to detail if you've got the dining package. They were really helpful, let me know exactly which courses I was entitled to and how many from each. Salads, entrees, starters, etc. La Cucina, on the other hand, I found the staff quite uninterested, unattentive, no explanation whatsoever with the dining package and as this was my first experience of the three specialty restaurants it kind of set things up to a bad start and I thought that that was what was going to happen across all of the restaurants but it wasn't. Uh, food a little bit subpar for a specialty restaurant I really was expecting better. The food was cold, I did have to send one dish back. Um, yeah, La Cucina, a little bit disappointing, but everywhere else I experienced Le Bistro and Cagney's, absolutely top notch. The main dining room on the whole was very good. However, there were a couple of meals that were subpar. One day in particular, I didn't really like any of the courses, which is unusual for me. Um, but as I say, generally very, very good. If I had to rate the food overall, Although it was a little inconsistent, I would probably say they got it right a good 85% of the time. So it could have been far, far worse. On to my room. So it was an inside, so not a huge amount of space, but it was enough for me traveling solo. There's a double closet with plenty of hangers and obviously you can ask for more if you don't have enough. The place was kept absolutely spotless considering it was only cleaned once a day. It was kept very, very clean. I uh, could not fault that whatsoever. It was spotless. Compared to one of my recent cruises on Carnival Celebration, it was light night and day. No dust, no grubby marks anywhere. Absolutely 10 out of 10 for cleanliness. On to the room steward then. So normally when I'm on a cruise, the steward will knock on the door and introduce himself and ask if there's anything that I need. 
On this cruise, that didn't happen. I didn't actually meet this steward until day two. Um, yeah, kind of a little bit disappointing. He did, he was very attentive. He did look after the room. Um, when I did see him, he did ask if I needed anything. But I just kind of like that touch point on day one, just so you know who to ask for. You know the face, the familiar face that you hopefully see throughout the rest of your cruise. Yeah, just could have been improved a little bit more. I know they have lots of rooms to look after, but that personal touch really goes a long way. Makes me willing to tip just a little bit more at the end of the cruise. On to the entertainment then. So pretty good overall, absolutely no filming or videoing any of the shows. So there is very limited footage apart from the finales at the end of the shows. This also includes some of the impromptu performances in Spinnaker Lounge where they did a night of singing Broadway songs. There wasn't a show as such, they were literally just singing songs from Broadway. So I did find it a little bit odd that they didn't allow recording of this. Were they embarrassed that it would get out so that other cruise lines could see the performance? I don't know. But yeah, generally good. There were some um, interesting acts. There was a juggler that was um, funny in places, boring in others, but as always you do tend to get the headline shows and uh, a few random performers throughout the week. Um, yeah, there was a singer that I, I wasn't overly enthralled by, but she could belt them out. So yeah, overall pretty good entertainment. Could it be improved? Absolutely. Was it terrible? Not by a long stretch. I probably would rate it 7.5 to 8 out of 10 for the entertainment. And lastly, the staff. These guys could not do enough for you. Always friendly, always head hello. Nothing was a problem. In particular, the bar staff in Spinnaker were really, really friendly and chatty and took a genuine interest in me and my likes and what I'm doing throughout the cruise. Uh, and what I do off the ship. So yeah, really, really nice. I really did feel like part of the Norwegian family throughout my cruise. I have been on cruises where there have been quite miserable staff or don't really want to interact with you too much. So this was really, really nice. Being 8,000 miles away from home and traveling solo, it's always good to see a friendly, happy, smiley, helpful person and that is exactly what I got on this cruise. So that brings us to the end of this cruise review of Norwegian Jewel. Have you been on Norwegian Jewel? Are you planning to? What have you done or what would you like to do on board? What's your favourite or least favourite thing? Drop your comments below. Do please consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you are the first to be notified when new content drops. There is plenty more dual content coming your way. So thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you on the next upload. Bye now. Dum, da, da, da.